It's not something that just started recently. Branding has been practiced since the dawn of civilization. The word branding or the word brand was coined from the word Old Norse Brandy, which means to burn. It was a practice that was um, done in the early 80s, whereby people who rode horses tries to mark their horses so as to identify them easily from those of their neighbors or their friend. So they do this by actually putting something like a hot iron into a fire. When the thing gets to red cook hot, when it gets very hot, they inscribe it on the body of the horse, thereby putting mark on the horse. So the basic um, prerequisite of doing that was actually to create a means of identity so as to separate their horses from that of their customers, their friends, or those in their neighborhood. That was how branding evolved. The first registered brand in the world today was the Bass Beer in England. It was registered under the British Trademark Registration of um, 1875. In modern era, it has evolved from just the act of identification to a means of customer perception. This is very, very important. Branding has shifted from viewing just identification to a customer-centric concept. It is a customer-centric concept. You are centered on the customer. That's what branding is all about. What then is brand strategy? You know, the word strategy simply means an action point or an action plan to move from point A to point B. It is the action plan to move from point A to point B. If I am to move from Edo State to Lagos State, it means I'm going to be having a commuter, a vehicle that will take me from Edo State to Lagos State. That process of moving from point A to point B is what we call strategy. There are strategies in place. Then brand strategy is the action point or the action plan to take a brand from point A to point B. You will not find this definition anywhere. This is just a simplified form because I told you the goal of learning or the goal of teaching is to make something as simple as possible so that you understand. So I'm trying to make use of these illustrations to make it easy as possible. Now, the point A from the schematic you are seeing there, the point A is the brand. Why? The point B is your ID client. So branding is actually consigned with taking your brand and registering it to your ID clients. Therefore, there are intermediate steps that must be taken. Those intermediate steps are the strategy that we are talking about. Those three steps, they are the strategy that we are talking about. So I went further to elaborate on that schematics. You see that we now have something like a love icon. It's like a match mating process whereby, for example, you want to wed a man and a woman in a church. So the process of branding or brand strategy is like a matchmaking process whereby you're trying to unify your brand with your ID clients. That's what it's just all about. Therefore, we can say that brand strategy is the step taken to intercept or link a unique brand to a unique customer. I want you to write that down. It is the strategy that is taken to intercept a unique brand to a unique customer. There's a schematic there of a triangle that um, depicts so many things. On the um, right hand side, we have deliverables, projects plus creative strategies, brand strategies. The deliverables are the things that the customers can see. It can be a product. Sometimes it can be intangible. It can be a service. They are within the reach of the customer. Then for the project and creative strategy, as well as the brand strategy, they are within the control of the business or the brand itself. They are within the control of the firm. I went further to elaborate on it. The deliverables, for example, maybe a packet of spaghetti can contain logo. It can contain a brand color. It can contain a business name. It can contain a website or a tangible product. That's how it is, the deliverables. It is what you are offering to your customer. That is what the customer sees within the sphere of your businesses or outside the sphere of your businesses. There are some things which your customer has control over. Those are the things you actually put forward to influence their decision on your particular brand or on your brand. Are you following? 
So logo is not the brand itself. It's actually a marker to indicate what your brand signifies. For example, once you take, once you come in contact with MTN, the very first thing that comes to your mind is versatility. There's this concept of universal um, or global presence that is accosted to MTN brand. That's because even the motto says it everywhere you go. And there's something that is conversant with them. They have a brand color, which is yellow. Once you see yellow, you're, the moment you see it, you just know that this thing has to do with MTN. So when building a brand, you should take this into consideration. Number one, your logo, which is the, I call it the basic unit of your brand. The logo is the basic unit of your brand. It is the atom of your brand. Then we have the business name, very, very important. There's nobody on it that does not have a name. A name actually represents your vision. A name represents your vision. For example, uh, my name is Praise, but my business name is Praise Tech. So the Praise Tech actually demystify or tries to tell you a lot about my vision as a brand that I'm into tech and I tend to make use of tech as a way of bridging some of the lapses we have in the society today. Then we have the project's creative strategy. This one includes your creative belief, your content strategy, your US marketing and sales phone. Now, these are the contributable strategies within the reach of your brand that you put into consideration in order to take that, your product, to meet your end um, users, which are your customers. Then the brand strategy will include positioning, your mission, and your brand direction. Then, we now have in the triangle, we have what, how, and why. So, the very first quadrant answers the question, what? What are you willing to offer to your customers? What are they saying? Then the second one is, how will you get those products to your end customers? Then the third one is, why? Why am I sending it? Am I just sending it out for sending sake? Or am I sending it out just to create a perception in their mind, to influence them to get my products? Am I actually sending it to create a relationship between myself and them? Am I sending this product to build a network? Sure, you can actually be sending the product to build a network between yourself and your end customers. It's very, very key. That's where many persons get it from. When they are trying to build a brand, they tend to just say their products. They tend to just say their products without taking into con uh, cognition that they have to build relationship with their businesses or uh, with their customer. There's a very good example of a particular company is an OER company in data states. They have this culture of building schools within uh, Niger data. They build schools, but they're actually there for a particular purpose to extract OER and the rest. But they have a way of um, giving back in return for what they are taking from the company and the community. So by that, you're actually buying the trust and you're actually buying the interest of that particular community. Even if you do anything that is detrimental to them, they will not really take it seriously because at the end of the day, they get something in return. Or you are you are into uh, maybe say catering, you bake, you can bake cake, and when you are delivering the um, cake to your um, customer, you can just decide to add uh, maybe recharge card to it. Those are monuments to build your relationship with your close your customer. Are you getting me? All right. So what roles does um, brand strategy play in marketing? Number one, it helps us to allocate funds to maximize your return on investment. It is a way of using limited resources to gain maximized results. You are allocating limited funds to maximize your profits. The goal of any business is to make profits. It is very, very key. But there is something called liquidity. It is what keeps your business to survive. So you should not exit liquidity, but you should try to maintain your profits. Are you, are, you, are you getting me? So branding or brand strategy actually helps you to allocate funds in order to maximize the return of your investment. You are investing money, so you want to make sure that whatsoever you are investing, you get maybe 50% of it or 100% of it. That's what strategy actually helps you to do. Then it actually helps you to reach revenue and awareness goal. It helps to reach revenue and awareness goal. Then, most importantly, it helps to bridge emotional goals, clarity, confidence, alignment, and motivation. Your brand can motivate your customer. It can create clarity about your products. 
it can build the confidence of your end users or your prospect around you. Then it helps you to know who to target and how to execute your plan. For instance, you execute a marketing survey into a particular community and you discover that you are selling iPhone, iPhone 12 and iPhone 15. So within that community, a lot of persons were going for the iPhone 12. A lot of persons were not going for the iPhone 15. Now, simple mathematics or simple IQ will tell you that you should continue your say more on iPhone 12 than iPhone 15. It is not that iPhone 15 is more, um, it's not that iPhone 12 is more expensive or more graded compared to iPhone 15. But at that point in time, what you should be considering is the purchasing power of your customers. At that point in time, the purchasing power of your customer was the key factor that determines or influencing, influences their purchasing power or their purchasing action. That is how much uh, funds they have at that point in time. A lot of persons will go for quantity rather than quality. Please write that down. A lot of persons will go for quantity rather than quality. And a lot of persons can also go in, um, for quality rather than quantity. But many a times, if you, if you understand the market, that a lot of persons are going because of the quantity or because of the price range, then you should focus your, your attention more on building your brand around the price range that is available to your end users. Now, we have different types of branding. We have different types of branding. Number one, we have personal branding. It is about nurturing your reputation in the business fair, e.g. bring your task comedy. This type of uh, uh, branding simply has to do with you personalizing the business, nurturing it in the minds of your customer. It is just about building your name, maintaining your reputation. Brain Jota is Brain Jota. That's his name. That's his stage name. He's a person. He's a comedian. So the moment you see Brain Jota, you see himself. He's not different from the brand himself. He does not have a product that he's selling. Are you getting me? Then we have one important um, aspect of branding or type of branding strategy, which is called corporate branding. Now, it focuses on promoting the name and product of a brand itself. Example is Nike and Coca-Cola. If there's any brand I would like you to follow, to learn a lot from in marketing, is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, they are, they are one of the most, I think, the most successful brand in the world as it have it. They are one of the most successful brand. Um, they have a very, very strong marketing strategy that is even beyond the comprehension of some persons. You will not understand it. They have the premise. They actually operate on a type of branding, a complex form of branding called umbrella branding. I will, I will talk about that later. I will talk about that. They, they promote their name and their products. For example, if you buy a bottle of Coke, what you see on the, on the, uh, on the Coke is the name of the brand as well as the content, which is the Coke itself. Then we now have another third, um, third type, which is the product branding. That is an attempt to brand individual products that falls under the umbrella system. E.g., for example, Nike. They have shoes, they have clothes and bags. I said something about the umbrella system. Nike also uh, um, operates. For example, you have a brand and you offer a, a lot of services. That brand can become the house of the rest or the least brand. I don't know if you are getting it. For example, Apple, which is iPhone company, they have wristwatch, they have iPhones, and they have MacBooks. So all of these are separate products, but they have the umbrella name of Apple. Hope you are getting it. Then we have another fourth type, which is co-branding. Co-branding. It involves collaboration between two or more brands to reach a segmented audience. Mind you. They are actually trying to reach a segmented audience. At that point in time, they are not competing. A very good example is between MTN and Glue. If they try to bring CSG network, maybe the two of them can come together to say, let's collaborate together because we see that a lot of persons are complaining about the 5G network. It's not actually fast. There are a lot of delays. And the local area network and discharge. And some of the radiations are engaged or they are detrimental to human heads. So these are some of the factors they can just take into consideration. At that point in time, they are not competing again. They now see themselves as one because they want to achieve a common purpose. That's what we call co-branding. So you can actually use this as a tool. Let me tell you a trick. You can use this as a tool if you are a startup. 
if you know somebody in your line of business that is already ahead of you, you don't need to compete with that person at a point in time. You can use this as a strategy. You can collaborate with that person part-time. You can collaborate with that person for a period of time, telling the person that you want to achieve this or this, telling the person that this is what you want. The moment you come to a head or you come to a conclusion, you guys can execute your marketing strategy together. When you reach a lot of cont- uh, 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 customers, then you may be able to like gain experience. What this actually helps you do, number one, it helps you to minimize risk of losses. It helps you to minimize your risk of losses. Then two, it helps you to gather experience from those who are already ahead of you. Then it also, also helps you to build your network in the marketing space. And the very last type of branding that I'll be talking about is the online branding. It is the newest form of branding which involves an attempt where all of the previous type of brand channel their attention to meet visual customers using e-tools and media etc. This is one of the areas that I actually want to talk about. It is one of the most important areas, the aspect of um, online branding. Very, very important. Please, if you know you are not making use of social media, try to make use of it because social media is a very strong tool. It's not just for messaging alone. It's for business. Social media was created for business. All right. So we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have Telegram, we have TikTok. You can promote your product there. It is actually a means of reaching out to a large range of audience. That's what we call the WWW, the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web can reach customers across continents. You can reach customers in Asia. You can reach customers in um, America, Antarctica, anywhere around the world, even in Europe. You can be in your small room. And you are rich, you are you are distributing your product to person someone in America. That's the beauty of online marketing or online branding. And trust me, there is no there is none of these um, businesses that have existed beforehand that are not making use of this thing now. Coca-Cola is making use of it, MTN is making use of it, Arise is making use of it. So why don't you make use of it? So thank you very much for your time. This way I'll be um during the cutting close for branding strategy in marketing thank you thank you so much Mehmet. all right are there thank are there you. any questions mm-hmm. i can't hear you hello can you hear me hello can you can you hear me i can hear you sir okay uh Concerning uh, what you said about uh, uh, personal branding. Yes. Okay. Um, I, can you hear me? So I want to I ask, like, if, like, f- like I'm a comedian. My name is MC Tolesman. So I'm, I'm a brand by myself, right? All right. Yes, sir. Okay. So what does it take? What does it take me for in my in my own line of business now? If I see or in my own in my own feed, if I find it uh, very hard to to reach out to uh, uh, new like new fans or new people, so what does it take me as a an, an upcoming to engage massively with people? Just as you said about collaboration. So I want you to throw more light on that, sir. Okay. You can hear me can you very hear me, well. Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very I can much. Hear you, sir. To- Thank you very much, MC Tolisman. So I would like to throw more light on that. Now you see, um All right, sir. many many times at the infantry stage of starting a business, one of the major things we encounter as a brand is the available reach to get to your prospects or your customers or your audience. It's a very, very difficult thing to do right now because we are in a world of competition. Like I said before, somebody said that the world is a marketplace. Only the workers make the difference. So it means that you have to channel a lot of action, a lot of strategy. You have to be strategic about everything you are doing. You have to be strategic. Mm-hmm. So first and foremost, you have to collaborate with a lot of persons. It's very, very important. When, when you are doing that, you try to gain a lot from them. You try to learn from their strategy. They too have a strategy yes, that sir. is working for them. They have a strategy that is working for them that made them to become what they are today. So you have to understand yes, that. It's not something that, it's not a rocket science. It takes time. So you just have to constantly follow them, 
and there's something you should do you should always try to like give them something in return for their service i don't know if you are getting okay. me you try to give them yes, something sir. in return is a way of actually influencing their moods to ensuring that they give you the best i don't know if i've answered yes, the sir. question yes sir thank you so much sir you're welcome thank you so much my pleasure all right so um, is there any other question no sir i'm free all right for me at the end of this at the end of this session um i'm going to um create uh, i'm going to drop a link where you can ask question i'm going to drop a link where you can ask question so but right now um what i'll be doing is i'll be going into graphics now graphics actually is coined from two word graphic design it is a concept whereby you try to make use of uh visuals things that you can see elements shapes color and you try to harmonize it into becoming something the word design there actually means function god created man in his image and likeness and he said be fruitful and multiply take dominion over the earth so the design of man was to make was to take dominion over the earth so if i tell you that i'm designing a particular piece it means that that particular piece has a function it is either to send information or to mar information. But many times the purpose of, of graphics or graphics design is actually to create information or to communicate to your end users. So I'll be making use of um, a particular tool here with my, on my phone to quickly teach you on um, the principles of graphics in branding. So this is a very important um, tool um i'll just advise you download it so i'll be making a very quick design now this is the interface of the application the application is called pizzle lab you can go over to a uh, play store to download it i'll come over to this button it's been highlighted on your screen so you just follow me closely i'll move over to color this to create background i would take a any type of um this is called a gradient i will take any type of the gradient all right Click on it and adjust my color. Then I'll move over to this other end and pick a lighter variant of that particular color. Okay. All right, I've created a background for this. So the next thing I'll do, I'm going to own a grid line. In graphics, grid lines are kind of markers that help you to know where you are supposed to place your elements in graphics. They are kind of markers that help you to know where you are going to place your elements in graphics. So what I'm just going to do is that I will click on this same grid line um, with the one with, um, with a setting option. I'll click on it and drag down. All right. Click on it and drag down. Then I'll go back again. I'll add another grid lines here and I'll add another one in here. Just follow me closely. Then I would like to use a shape. To import shape in the PC Lab application, you come over to this structure that look after this um, overlap of two shape, the middle one, which is like a benzene ring, you click on it, it's alighted on the screen, you will see it. You click on it, then you move over to shape. I've taken the rectangle shape. All I just need to do is to expand and drag it down a little bit. Then I press the night sign. Okay. So I'm gradually building something. Graphic design is actually a building process. It is a, it is a anabolic process. You are building. You are using shapes. You are using color. You are using elements. Then I'll just move over to my gallery. Then... Um, I will import an image. I'm very sorry. I'm doing a lot of things at the same time. So my phone is giving me some misbehavior here. Okay, I'll just go back to my gallery. Okay. Um, uh, what will I use here? Let me use something nice. Okay, I'll just try to look for a picture. These are PNGs. PNGs means portable network graphics. 
means possible network graphics. So let me just click on this food stuff. I'll click on it. Um, I don't like it. Let me use something else. Okay, I'm still with you. Um, okay. Okay, uh, I'm still with you. I'm just trying to, okay. Let me just use this. Okay, let me use this. So I'll take this over here. I'll take this over here. Then I'll try to align. Now there's what we call alignment in graphic design is of three types. We have the left alignment, we have the right alignment, and we have the central alignment. So for this type of design, I'll be making use of the left and right alignment at the same time. Many times when you are using the central alignment, it means you are focusing all of your elements to the center. Then when you are making use of the um, right alignment, it means you are focusing all your elements to the right. Then if you are using the left alignment, you are focusing all of your elements to the left. So that's just it. It's as simple as that. All right, we are building something already. So I'll just take this up a little bit. All right, then let me see. I want to write something, a promotional ad for a business. Let me just say chop. Okay, that's to type, to add your test. Then I'll come over here to my fonts and um, just change the fonts to something that um, is okay. Let me try this. Okay, so I'll just increase the size and rotate it a little bit. Okay, I'll increase the size again and it looks too segmented. So let me give it something that will separate it from the background. All right. Hope you are following me. Okay. I'll reduce the opacity of the glue. That's the radius of a shadow that I'm going to add to it. Then take it down a little bit. So this is what we have. I'm building something already. Then I'm going to add another test, which is well, chop well. So this is a promotional ad. Is ideal. Now I can just move over here and um, add a font. I already know the font that I want to use in my mind. It's Gustavo. I'll click on it. Then increase the size. I'll place it over this and I'll move over to color. I'll give that test the color. I'll use a gradient. I'll use a gradient. A gradient simply means two colors mixed together. Okay, two colors mixed together. Then move to the other anchor end. Drag the color. Okay. Okay. Then I'll move over here. And add a stroke to it. I'll add a white stroke. A very small white stroke. Let me add shadows. I'll reduce the opacity of the shadow. I'll drag it to the left a little bit and bring it down. I'm going to up the stroke. Let me see how it looks like. I think it actually looks better than the previous one. Yes. So I can just do some promotional stuff here. Introduce a shape. Introduce a shape. Give it a gradient feel.
take it here reduce the other anchor end and press ok so i have something like this so what i just need to do is to come over here and reduce the opacity then i'll type something beef pepper soup um salad fried rice Now I'll move over here. I have a point in mind that I want to use. I'll just click on TG. Okay. I'll reduce the fonts and place it over here. So I think we are already getting the beauty out of it. Then I'll move over here. I will import another caption. Okay, I like to import this. No, I don't want to use this. Are you guys still with me? Yes. All right. So, uh, okay, what I'll just do is this. I'll move over to the eraser option i'll pick on this black and remove the background okay then i'll move over to color i'll come to this give it this color then i'll click on this and reduce the size and place it here then i'll now write something like this 50 percent off I'll drag it over on top of that particular um, icon I imported. Then I'll use the same font. Drag it. So if you notice, for this particular design, I have obeyed a particular principle in graphic design that states that you should not use more than three fonts in a design. You don't use more than three fonts. So if you check this, I've used just three fonts. The main test, which is the chop, then the well is script font and the body font, which is beef pepper soup. So if I want to put something like maybe the location, I'll just go back to my icon and then I'll click I'll use a location PNG. I have I have some here. So Very sorry for the delay. Okay, I think I've seen one. Okay, so I'll just move over to the eraser. I'll remove the white parts, then give it red color. I hope you are following me. I'll give it red color. I'll use red gradient. This is not red actually. I'm going to make use of red gradient. So I'll take this to red. Okay. I think I have it. Then I'll reduce the size of this particular PNG. I'll reduce the size. A little bit and then I'll move over to write the body number seven Azuawa Lee Bini City of of G R O A. Then I'll move here. 
I'll change. I'll use the fonts I used before, then change the color to black. And I'll reduce the size and bring it down, increase the size a little bit. Then this in font, I'm going to do something. You can actually copy fonts like this. Press the copy option. Then I'll just say, let me see. Marketing students key tree. I mean, that's how to spell key tree. I mean, let me just put it like that. And I'll give this white coloration to create a contrast and i'll bring it here so you see that i'm actually working within the constraint of the grid lines that i put on before so with this i'm done with design just to add some more touches to make it looks um look nice i'll just come over to gallery i'll come over to gallery And then um, add something. There's something I would like to add to actually build up the aesthetic of the design. Okay, I'll add this. Okay, I think I'm done. So if I want to save, I'll just move by save as image, JPG, very high, then save to gallery. Boom, I'm done with design. When I check my phone, you have it saved already. So this is the design that we just made. I'm going to drop it on our group chats. Thank you very much for having me. This is the little I can offer for today. I'm very sorry for spending extra 15 minutes. I'm very sorry about that. If there are any question, I'm going to drop it on the um I'm going to drop it on the WhatsApp group link so that um, you can actually join in. You can actually ask your questions there. I'll drop a link to attend to all questions. Thank you very much.